In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use variables and expressions in a more advanced way. Let's start with this pressure gauge illustration. I'd like to rotate its arrow from minimum to maximum value. First, let me create a variable of type fraction and name it pressure. Its value will go from 0 to 1. Next, I'd like to somehow link the pressure variable with the rotation angle of the arrow. For this, I'll create an expression. Let's name it angle. We'll use a simple mathematical expression here. Constant minus 240 multiplied by the value of the pressure variable that I created before. The 240 constant corresponds to the angle defined by the arc of the scale. Now, when I connect the angle variable with the rotation angle attribute of the arrow shape, you can see that the arrow has jumped to a different position. It actually rotated around a rotation origin that is somewhere here. To fix this, I need to move the rotation origin to the center of the gauge. Let's return the pressure to zero to bring the arrow back to its default state. To change the rotation origin, I just have to select the shape I want to rotate and open the transforms box in the inspector. When the transform group is open, this little green circle that represents the transform origin appears in the canvas. I can just grab it and move it to the correct position. Now, when I change the value of the pressure variable, you can see that the arrow is rotating properly around the new rotation origin. However, it is not perfect yet. The arrow rotation should start at this point, which corresponds to the minimal pressure, and stop at this point, which corresponds to the maximal pressure. To fix this, I need to offset the angle variable a bit when it is used. Fortunately, this is really simple. When you click on the attribute connection button in the inspector, this little popover shows up, and you can set the variable offset using this text field. I just need to type 120, which is actually this angle. When I close the popover, the arrow jumps to the minimum value on the scale. Now, when I test it, you can see that the arrow rotates perfectly. It goes from zero to one, from minimum to maximum. To make it a little bit more useful, I would like to indicate when the pressure passes this limit. Here, the limit will be 0.7, because there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven marks on the scale. When the pressure is past the limit, we'll indicate it in this little display. When the value is between zero and 0 0.7, the display will be green. And when the arrow passes the limit, the display will turn red. I've already prepared two colors for this in my library. Let's create another expression for this. I'll call it limiting color. Here, I'll use a condition. When the pressure is higher than 0 0.7, the result should be high pressure color. Otherwise, the result should be low pressure color. Note that the names of the colors I used in this expression are a bit different from the actual names of the colors. When naming your colors, you can use spaces and other non-alphanumeric characters. However, when referring to colors and other library items, such as gradients and your expressions, you have to use the camel case form, which means that if the name consists of multiple words, they should be capitalized, all spaces should be removed, and the resulting identifier should start with a lowercase letter. So let's try that out. As you can see, when I change the pressure and it goes past the 0.7 limit, the thumbnail, my limiting color variable, changes its color from green to red. Finally, I just need to connect this variable with the fill attribute of my display shape, like this. And that's done. When I change the value of the pressure variable and the arrow passes the limit, the display will properly indicate that the pressure is too high by turning red. Thanks for watching.